Hi boys and girls, welcome back to my channel. My name is CK and my channel is Psychology. And today I am in the historic district of Puru here in Kuala Lumpur. Now Puru is situated right in the heart of Kuala Lumpur and this place is filled with delicious food. In this video, I will be showing you all my favorite haunts for good food here in Budu. As an outstation student, I used to ride the bus from Penang to KL. First stop is the Budu Central bus station where all the buses in West Malaysia would stop. And immediately after the bus stop, I would go and look for good food. And to my surprise, most of these places are still running. I'll talk to you a little bit about the history of Budu. Budu's history stretches as far back as the 1880s and is often regarded as the backyard of Pataling Street, which Chinatown is now located. In fact, the Chinese name for Budu means half jungle. Trading activities in the street of Pudu dates back in 1884 when Sir Frank Swettenham started a brick manufacturing factory to supply construction material for the city of Kuala Lumpur. By 1900, as Bataling Street became overcrowded, many residents started moving in and Pudu Street was then upgraded to an arterial road of Kuala Lumpur. The area began to thrive and by 1950s, as the city was recovering from World War II, the agricultural land was converted to commercial development. Pudu Wet Market, the oldest in the city, started operating in 1957 and is now one of the largest in Malaysia. The most iconic building here is Pudu Prison, also called Pudu Jail was built by the British in 1895. This is one of the most famous jail of all of Malaysia and it used to house many celebrity criminals throughout Malaysian history. It began in 1891 and Puru Jail took four years to build. Sadly, it has seen been torn down in 2012 due to its strategic location and highly prized property value. Because of its close proximity to Bukit Bintang, Pudu resident is now made up of mostly immigrants from Bangladesh, Myanmar, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Cambodia. Present day Pudu is now characterized by a wealth of street eats and historical architecture. is my go-to when I needed one ton meat and they've been here like forever like at least more than 25 years I would say they have like all sorts of noodles the curry noodle is also very highly recommended which comes out a little bit later on in the morning like 9 a.m. but they are here very early every day like 7 ish um, if you need a good noodle mm. It still has the same taste as I first discovered this place years ago when I was a college student. This store really is, this store really gives me the Pudu, Pudu atmosphere vibe. It's very traditional, very home run. And uh, yeah, this store is like the ultimate old Pudu atmosphere that it did. Uh, old Pudu atmosphere and vibe. Mm. So delicious. Great way to start the day. So today it's a it's a one hour wait for this. This is the famous little eat shop of fish head noodle soup. They are so popular amongst the local, and they've been here for a very very long time. I came to this place when they only have uh, the arrangement under the tree arrangement sort of set up, and now they have a brand new Z 
zinc like stall and which is quite spacious. I think now they have allowed I think now they have about 50 tables where they used to have only like 10 tables. Mandarin, the noodle shop is called Tangke, which means you have to wait. It's run by the Wong family. They are super, super popular. Their fish head noodle soup is one of the best in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, today, they have, today they have the tabby fish. Sometimes they have grouper, sometimes they have other fish. Uh, but today is the tabby fish. And look at that. I didn't have a try. Mm. So good. Well, I particularly like the soup. I think their soup carries a bit of sweetness. It's clear. And uh, the soup alone, I would come here. Uh, it's just so good. No joke. Fantastic. I have to finish this very quickly. A lot of people are waiting for my table. Super early morning here in Pudu. There's one stall that can wake me up anytime, and that is Chon Gate. There are many historical old food stores here in Budu because it's such a historical area. But I think Chonke tops everyone. This food stall has been here since the 1930s. They are over 90 years old. Over 90 years old. And they sell the famous Tai Po Mi. And I think this is the type of Hakka. Hakami, Sarawak noodle, Gonlomi, it's kind of like the same thing. But whenever I think of Gonlomi or Hakami or Sarawakmi or now it, in here they call it Taipo Mi, Chunke is the one that I come to. The Taoke here, the Taoke here is third generation and they close at 3 p.m. And his son, his son, fourth generation, is selling the same noodle opposite this road. So if you miss you know, if you miss coming here after 3 p.m., you can always go to the opposite side where the Taoke son, fourth generation, is selling this noodle. Mm. The noodle is thinner, so it's easier to swallow. I frequented Chunke many, many of times. And as I said, this is the stall that can wake me up like in the middle of the night. And I love their wonton. I really love their wonton. I think it's the soup that is that I can't find anywhere else. Oh, wow, so satisfying. Remember, if you're in Pudu early in the morning for breakfast, Chun Kei's Tai Po Mi. So this is ICC Pudu. This is ground zero for amazing, cheap, delicious hawker food in Pudu. And most of the sellers here are relocated from the old Indy market. So they are all very well established seller and have been in the business for many years. This is where local people eat local food. There's hardly any tourists here. Some of the famous ones are, of course, the QQ Popia and, also, and the Nonya Kueh here is also very highly recommended. 
This morning I'm picking ants nasi lemak. They haven't been here for a long time, but I heard that they have been a hit with the local. So here goes my taste bud. Oh, it's very thick. It's very thick coconut flavor, and the curry is like intense. Mmm, super yummy. So if you don't know Pudu food, or you're very foreign to Malaysian food, ICC Pudu is a great introduction to you. There's every single food you can think of, you can find it here in ICC Pudu. I am Teochew, which means I know a good porridge when I see one. And I have been coming back to Kunke as long as I can remember. I think they've been in operation for more than 30 years now, and they have the best porridge in Kuala Lumpur. I kid you not. I know people who have migrated overseas, and when they come back to Kuala Lumpur, this is their first stop. And what makes Kunke's porridge so special is because of the smooth porridge and also the delicious and smooth chicken that they have here. They used to operate all through the nights, but now they, they close earlier and earlier because I found out that they are sold out around 6 o'clock. So my advice to you if you want to come here is come here around like 2 p.m. They start their operation at 1, but come around 2. The longs are lined. The longs, the lines are long. Excuse me. The lines are long and table limited. So if you want to taste a bit, then come early and be prepared to wait. <laughs> So Ruby restaurants here at Budu are really famous for their dessert and they're currently held by fourth generation right now and all the materials are handmade here by scratch and they're very famous for their peanut butter paste but my favorite is the black sesame paste and it's really really good I really highly recommend and I think they've done up the place really well like it's very Instagrammable now and it attracts a lot of young people coming here in Ruby's. But uh, yeah, fourth generation, the taste is as authentic as it is uh, when they first started out the business. This is really, really highly recommended. Mm. Because I'm from Penang, everybody kept asking me where is the best prawn mee in Kuala Lumpur? Where can I find the closest to the taste of the original Penang prawn mee? Of course, we don't call prawn mee, prawn mee in Penang, we call them Hokkien mee. I recently discovered this store a few years back and the owner, Tao Ke Se, he's been making prawn mee since he was in his 20s. I don't know how old he is, but his prawn mee is the closest to the taste of that of Penang. As I mentioned in my Penang food video, the crucial element for a good prawn mee is your broth, your chili paste, which I don't really care much, and the freshness of your prawn. So this stall 
ticked all the criteria and the presentation was just very, very good. And I would say this, this doll is the closest, uh, if not as same as the Penang Hokkien Mee that you would get in Penang. This is one of the best, believe me. Mm. Yep, truly authentic. Ah. While there is certainly no shortage of clay pot chicken rice dishes in Malaysia, it can be quite tough to find a significantly good one. Most clay pot chicken rice are either too mushy or lack of aroma. Located near the Pudu Wet Market at Jalan Yu, Hyun Cage Clay Pot Chicken Rice has been around for more than 30 years. The restaurant started off with a small hawker stall at the Pataling Jaya Old Town Wet Market. Hyun Ki Clay Pot Chicken Rice still uses charcoal stove to cook the rice. Using charcoal makes a huge difference in the taste as it gives the dish an overall better flavor and aroma. This is a small lane of 150 meter, but it has almost more than 70 years of history. And most of the sellers here have been, are very well established and has been here for a very long time. There was a fire in Waisakai a few years ago, and that really devastated the community. And the rent went up very high after that, and a lot of business could not survive. But some of the stalls are still here. For example, I've always come for four-eye fried chicken. It's the best fried chicken in town. It is so crispy, I don't know why. There's always, always a long line and they're still here. This fried chicken is the best in town. Mmm. My God. Mmm. And my friend KK has introduced me to Curry Chi Chong Fun and they are also very famous here and they're famous for their pig skin so I'm gonna try it later on and there's, that shows that there's still so many food here that I haven't explored here at Puru Waisekai so that's it for my video so thank you for watching my video the best food here in Puru Puru has always been my first hangout place when I first moved to KL and as you can see it's a very very vibrant community very working class and very down-to-earth people who lived here used to be dominated mostly by Chinese but now it's very multicultural we have workers coming in from Myanmar from Nepal that has transformed the landscape as well it is still one of the most authentic district here in Kuala Lumpur and hasn't been really glamorized by a lot of shopping malls not yet so thank you for watching this video. Uh, it is my honor to host you. And these are all my usual places to eat in Budu. I hope you now know where to find good food in Budu. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.